Blue is considered the first published Native American writer. A. N. Scott Mamaday. B. Charles Eastman. C. William Apess. D. Zitkala Saw. Answer. C. William Apess. Which author wrote the novel, Ceremony, a key work in Native American literature? A. Leslie Marmon Silco. B. James Welch. C. Louise Erdrich. D. Sherman Alexi. Answer. A. Leslie Marmon Silco. Who wrote the novel, House Made of Dawn, which won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1969? A. N. Scott Mamaday. B. Gerald Weisner. C. Simon Ortiz. D. Joy Harjo. Answer. A. N. Scott Mamaday. Which Native American author is known for his works that often explore themes of identity, poverty, and alcoholism among contemporary Native Americans? A. Darcy McNichol. B. James Welch. C. Sherman Alexie. D. Leslie Marmon Soko. Answer. C. Sherman Alexie. Who is known for writing about the Anishinaabe people and is the author of Love Medicine? A. N. Scott Mamaday. B. Gerald Weisner. C. Louise Erdrich. D. Simon Ortiz. Answer. C. Louise Erdrich. Which Native American author wrote? The Surrounded, a novel about a young man torn between two worlds, traditional Native American life, and modern American culture. A. James Welch. B. Darcy McNichol. C. Sherman Alexi. D. Gerald Weisner. Answer. B. Darcy McNichol. Who was a Christian preacher and author of the autobiography, A Short Narrative of My Life? A. Samson Ockham. B. William Apess. C. Sarah Winnemucca. D. John Roland Ridge. Answer. A. Samson Ockham. Which author wrote, A Son of the Forest, and a public lecture, Eulogy of King Philip? A. Samson Ockham. B. William Apess. C. Sarah Winnemucca. D. John Roland Ridge. Answer. B. William Apess. Who wrote about her tribe's first interactions with European Americans in, Life Among the Paiutes? A. Samson Ockham. B. William Apess. C. Sarah Winnemucca. D. John Roland Ridge. Answer. C. Sarah Winnemucca. Which author wrote, The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Marietta, considered the first novel by a Native American? A. Samson Ockham. B. William Apess. C. Sarah Winnemucca. D. John Roland Ridge. Answer. D. John Roland Ridge. Who wrote, Old Indian Days, a collection of stories about Native American life and culture? A. Charles Eastman. B. Morning Dove. C. John Joseph Matthews. D. John Milton Oskison. Answer. A. Charles Eastman. Which Native American author wrote, Coyote Tales, a collection of stories from Native American oral traditions? A. Charles Eastman. B. Morning Dove. C. John Joseph Matthews. D. John Milton Oskison. Answer. B. Morning Dove. Who wrote the novel, Kojwi, one of the first novels by a Native American author? A. Charles Eastman. B. Morning Dove. C. Darcy McNichol. D. John Joseph Matthews. Answer. B. Morning Dove. Which Native American author wrote, The Surrounded, a novel exploring the clash between traditional Native American life and modern American culture? A. Charles Eastman. B. Morning Dove. C. Darcy McNichol. D. John Joseph Matthews. Answer. C. Darcy McNichol. Who wrote, Green Grow the Lilacs, a play that became the basis for the musical, Oklahoma? A. Charles Eastman B. Morning Dove C. Lynn Riggs. D. Zitkala Saw. Answer. C. Lynn Riggs. Who coined the term, Native American Renaissance, to describe the flowering of literary work by Native American writers? A. N. Scott Mamaday. B. Charles Eastman. C. Kenneth Lincoln. D. Zitkala Saw. Answer. C. Kenneth Lincoln. Who was the first Native American author to win a Pulitzer Prize for his novel, House Made of Dawn? A. N. Scott Mamaday B. Charles Eastman C. Morning Dove D. Lynn Riggs. Answer. A. N. Scott Mamaday. Which author, of Blackfeet and A. Ananan descent, was known for important fiction in the 1970s? A. James Welch. B. Leslie Marmon Silco. C. Gerald Weisner. D. Joy Harjo. Answer. A. James Welch. Who, of Laguna descent, was known for important fiction in the 1970s? A. James Welch. B. Leslie Marmon Silco. C. Gerald Weisner. D. Joy Harjo. Answer. B. 
B. Leslie Marmon Soko. Which Chippewa author was known for important fiction in the 1970s? A. James Welch. B. Leslie Marmon Soko. C. Gerald Weisner. D. Joy Harjo. Answer. C. Gerald Weisner. Who, of Muscogee descent, was known for poetry in the 1970s? A. Joy Harjo. B. Simon J. Ortiz. C. Wendy Rose. D. Joseph Bruchak. Answer. A. Joy Harjo. Which Acoma author was known for poetry in the 1970s? A. Joy Harjo. B. Simon J. Ortiz. C. Wendy Rose. D. Joseph Bruchak. Answer. B. Simon J. Ortiz. Which author, of Hopi Miwok descent, was known for poetry in the 1970s? A. Joy Harjo. B. Simon J. Ortiz. C. Wendy Rose. D. Joseph Bruchak. Answer. C. Wendy Rose. Hoy's known for significant work in both poetry and fiction, and is of Abenaki descent. A. Joy Harjo. B. Simon J. Ortiz. C. Wendy Rose. D. Joseph Bruchak. Answer. D. Joseph Bruchak. Which Ojibwe author was a new voice in the 1980s, producing literature? A. James Welch. B. Leslie Marmon Silko. C. Gerald Weisner. D. Louise Erdrich. Answer. D. Louise Erdrich. Who was a new voice in the 1980s, producing literature, and of Laguna descent? A. James Welch. B. Leslie Marmon Silko. C. Gerald Weisner. D. Paula Gunn Allen. Answer. D. Paula Gunn Allen. Which Chickasaw author's work was a finalist for the 1991 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction? A. Linda Hogan. B. Michael Doris. C. Lucy Tapahonso. D. Sherman Alexie. Answer. A. Linda Hogan. Who won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2021 for The Night Watchman? A. Louise Erdrich. B. Joy Harjo. C. Tommy Orange. D. Linda Hogan. Answer. A. Louise Erdrich. In what year did Joy Harjo become the first Native American to hold the post of United States Poet Laureate? A. 2019. B. 2020. C. 2021. D. 2022. Answer. A. 2019. Whose novel about urban Indian life in California, There There, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2019? A. Louise Erdrich. B. Joy Harjo. C. Tommy Orange. D. Linda Hogan. Answer. C. Tommy Orange. Who was one of the first African-American writers, known for her works in the late 18th century? A. Phyllis Wheatley B. Toni Morrison C. Langston Hughes D. Zora Neale Hurston Answer. A. Phyllis Wheatley. What dominated African-American literature before the high point of enslaved people narratives? A. Autobiographical spiritual narratives. B. Fiction novels. C. Political essays. D. Historical accounts. Answer. A. Autobiographical spiritual narratives. What genre were accounts by people who had generally escaped from slavery, about their journeys to freedom and ways they claimed their lives? A. Slave narratives. B. Poetry. C. Fiction novels. D. Biographies. Answer. A. Slave narratives. When did the Harlem Renaissance occur? A. 18th century. B. 19th century. C. 20th century. D. 21st century. Answer. C. 20th century. Who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1993, becoming the first African American to receive this honor? A. Phyllis Wheatley. B. Toni Morrison. C. Langston Hughes. D. Zora Neale Hurston. Answer. B. Toni Morrison. What was the primary focus of African American literature before the American Civil War? A. Memoirs of people who had escaped from enslavement. B. Fiction novels about African American life. C. Political Essays on Racial Equality. D. Biographies of Prominent African American Figures. Answer. A. Memoirs of People Who Had Escaped from Enslavement. What distinguished the literature of freed slaves from the literature of free blacks born in the North before the Civil War? A. The use of spiritual narratives. B. The focus on racial injustices. C. The style of writing. D. The themes addressed in the narratives. Answer. A. The use of spiritual narratives. Who were two authors who debated how to confront racism in the United States at the turn of the 20th century? A. Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston. B. W. E. B. Dubois and Booker T. Washington.
C. Richard Wright and Gwendolyn Brooks. D. Toni Morrison and Alice Walker. Answer. B. W. E. B. Dubois and Booker T. Washington. Which literary work by Alice Walker won the Pulitzer Prize in 1982? A. The Color Purple. B. Beloved. C. Roots. The Saga of an American Family. D. Their Eyes Were Watching God. Answer. A. The Color Purple. Who wrote the novel, Beloved, which achieved both best-selling and award-winning status? A. Alex Haley. B. Alice Walker. C. Toni Morrison. D. Richard Wright. Answer. C. Toni Morrison. How can African-American literature be broadly defined? A. Writings by people of African descent living in the United States. B. Writings by African-Americans living anywhere in the world. C. Writings about African-American culture. D. Writings by African-American authors on any topic. Answer. A. Writings by people of African descent living in the United States. According to Princeton University professor Albert J. Rabodo, what does African-American literary study speak to? A. The history of African-Americans in the United States. B. The struggles of African-Americans for equality. C. The deeper meaning of the African-American presence in the nation. D. The inclusiveness of all races in American society. Answer. C. The deeper meaning of the African-American presence in the nation. What are some of the themes explored in African-American literature? A. Freedom and equality. B. African-American culture. C. Racism. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. What was an early theme of African-American literature in the early republic? A. African-American identity in a republic. B. African-American migration. C. African-American religion. D. African-American culture. Answer. A. African-American identity in a republic. What was a significant focus of African-American literature in the early republic? A. Exercise of political and social autonomy. B. Exploration of African-American folklore. C. Emphasis on African-American achievements. D. Critique of African-American society. Answer. A. Exercise of political and social autonomy. How has African-American literature been influenced by the African diasporic heritage? A. It has completely adopted African literary traditions. B. It has been shaped by the African diasporic heritage but has also influenced it in many countries. C. It has ignored the African diasporic heritage. D. It has rejected the African diasporic heritage. Answer. B. It has been shaped by the African diasporic heritage but has also influenced it in many countries. What distinguishes African American literature from most post colonial literature, according to scholars? A. It is primarily written by members of a minority community. B. It is primarily concerned with the experiences of colonialism. C. It is primarily written by authors residing in countries without vast wealth and economic power. D. It is primarily concerned with African literary traditions. Answer. A. It is primarily written by members of a minority community. Which of the following forms of oral poetry is rich in African American oral culture? A. Sonnets. B. Villanelles. C. Spirituals gospel music, blues, and rap. D. Haiku. Answer. C. Spirituals, gospel music, blues, and rap. According to Henry Louis Gates Jr., what is one trope common to African American literature? A. Signifying. B. Alliteration. C. Synecdoche. D. Litotes. Answer. A. Signifying. What does signifying refer to in African American literature? A. The deliberate repetition, cadence, and alliteration in African American oral culture. B. The act of critiquing other African American texts in an act of rhetorical self definition. C. The use of Western literary theory to analyze African American literature. D. The incorporation of African American oral poetry forms into written poetry and prose. Answer. B. The act of critiquing other African American texts in an act of rhetorical self definition. Who is the author of the oldest known piece of African American literature, Bar's Fight, written in 1746? A. Phyllis Wheatley. B. Lucy Terry. C. George Washington. D. Josiah Holland. Answer. B. Lucy Terry. When did Phyllis Wheatley publish her book, Poems on Various Subjects, Religious and Moral? A. 1773. B. 1784. C. 1746. 
D. 1854. Answer. A. 1773. What was remarkable about Phyllis Wheatley's achievement as a writer? A. She was the first African American to publish a book. B. She was the first African American to achieve international recognition as a writer. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Answer. C. Both A and B. How did Phyllis Wheatley authenticate her authorship of her poetry? A. She included a preface signed by prominent white male leaders affirming her authorship. B. She included a statement in her poetry confirming her identity. C. She included a letter from George Washington. D. She included a certificate of authenticity from a literary society. Answer. A. She included a preface signed by prominent white male leaders affirming her authorship. What was the significance of the authentication document included in Phyllis Wheatley's book? A. It was the first recognition of African American literature. B. It was the first example of a preface in American literature. C. It was the first time a woman had been recognized as a poet. D. It was the first time an enslaved person had published a book. Answer. A. It was the first recognition of African American literature. Who was considered the first published black writer in America? A. Phyllis Wheatley. B. Jupiter Hammond. C. William Wells Brown. D. Victor Sejour. Answer. B. Jupiter Hammond. When did Jupiter Hammond publish his poem, An Evening Thought, Salvation by Christ with Penitential Cries? A. 1711. B. 1761. C. 1778. D. 1786. Answer. B. 1761. What did Jupiter Hammond promote in his 1786, address to the Negroes of the state of New York? A. Gradual emancipation as a way to end slavery B. Immediate abolition of slavery C. The superiority of black people D. The inferiority of black people Answer. A. Gradual emancipation as a way to end slavery Who produced the earliest works of fiction by African American writers? A. Jupiter Hammond B. Phyllis Wheatley C. William Wells Brown D. Victor Sejour. Answer. C. William Wells Brown. What is the title of William Wells Brown's novel considered to be the first novel written by an African American? A. Clotel, or, The President's Daughter. B. Lemulator. C. An Evening Thought. Salvation by Christ with Penitential Cries. D. Bar's Fight. Answer. A. Clotel, or, The President's Daughter. What was significant about Frank J. Webb's 1857 novel, The Garys and Their Friends. A. It was the first African-American novel to be published in the United States. B. It was the first African-American fiction to portray passing. C. It was the first African-American novel to explore Northern racism. D. It was the first African-American novel to receive critical acclaim. Answer. B. It was the first African-American fiction to portray passing. Who wrote the first novel published in the United States by an African-American woman? A. Harriet Beecher Stowe. B. Harriet Wilson. C. Harriet Jacobs. D. Harriet Tubman. Answer. B. Harriet Wilson. What is the title of Harriet Wilson's novel? A. The Garys and Their Friends. B. R. Nig. C. The Bondwoman's Narrative. D. Clotel, or, The President's Daughter. Answer. B. R. Nig. Who is the author of, The Bondwoman's Narrative, which was written between 1853 and 1860 but not published until 2002? A. Phyllis Wheatley. B. Harriet Wilson. C. Hannah Crafts. D. Frank J. Webb. Answer. C. Hannah Crafts. What genre does, The Bondwoman's Narrative, fall into? A. Sentimental Novel. B. Slave Narrative. C. Autobiography. D. Science Fiction. Answer. B. Slave Narrative. What genre of African American literature developed in the middle of the 19th century, consisting of accounts written by fugitive slaves about their lives? A. Slave Tales. B. Abolitionist Narratives. C. Slave Narratives. D. Freedom Stories. Answer. C. Slave Narratives. What was the purpose of slave narratives? A. To describe the cruelties of life under slavery. B. To glorify the institution of slavery. C. To criticize the abolitionist movement. D. To advocate for the return of escaped slaves. Answer. A. To describe the cruelties of life under slavery. What novel by Harriet Beecher Stowe represents the abolitionist view of the evils of slavery? 
A. Uncle Tom's Cabin. B. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. C. The Sword and the Distaff. D. Aunt Phyllis's Cabin. Answer. A. Uncle Tom's Cabin. What category of slave narratives tends to have a strong autobiographical motif? A. Tales of Religious Redemption. B. Tales to Inspire the Abolitionist Struggle. C. Tales of Progress. D. None of the Above. Answer. B. Tales to Inspire the Abolitionist Struggle. Who is the author of Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, which is recognized as one of the most literary of all 19th century writings by African Americans? A. Frederick Douglass. B. Harriet Jacobs. C. Harriet Beecher Stowe. D. William Gilmore Sims. Answer. B. Harriet Jacobs. What was the pseudonym Harriet Jacobs used when writing her narrative? A. Lydia Maria Child. B. Linda Brent. C. Harriet Beecher Stowe. D. Mary Henderson Eastman. Answer. B. Linda Brent. What is the title of Harriet Jacobs' slave narrative? A. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. B. Uncle Tom's Cabin. C. The Garys and Their Friends. D. R. Nig. Answer. A. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. What specific injustices suffered by black women under slavery are detailed in Jacobs' narrative? A. Economic exploitation B. Forced labor C. Sexual harassment and the threat or actual perpetration of rape D. Segregation Answer. C. Sexual harassment and the threat or actual perpetration of rape. Who was the eventual editor of Harriet Jacobs' narrative, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl? A. Lydia Maria Child B. Harriet Beecher Stowe C. Frederick Douglass D. William Gilmore Sims Answer. A. Lydia Maria Child. Who refused to write a foreword for Harriet Jacobs' book? A. Frederick Douglass. B. Lydia Maria Child. C. Harriet Beecher Stowe. D. William Gilmore Sims. Answer. C. Harriet Beecher Stowe. How did Frederick Douglass first come to public attention in the North? A. As a politician. B. As an author of a slave narrative. C. As a journalist. D. As an orator for abolition. Answer. D. As an orator for abolition. What is the title of Frederick Douglass's best-known work, published in 1845? A. My Bondage and My Freedom. B. Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. C. Uncle Tom's Cabin. D. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. Answer. B. Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave. What was the immediate reception of Douglass's autobiography? A. It was criticized for its lack of eloquence. B. It was attacked for its inaccurate portrayal of slavery. C. It was an immediate bestseller. D. It was largely ignored by the public. Answer. C. It was an immediate bestseller. What was the revised and expanded version of Frederick Douglass's autobiography published as? A. My Life as a Slave B. My Bondage and My Freedom C. The Life of Frederick Douglass D. From Slavery to Freedom Answer. B. My Bondage and My Freedom. Who are some authors of early African American? Spiritual Autobiographies. A. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Jacobs, William Wells Brown. B. James Graniosa, John Marant, George White. C. Phyllis Wheatley, Jupiter Hammond, Harriet Wilson. D. None of the above. Answer. B. James Graniosa, John Marant, George White. Zilpha Elaw and Maria W. Stewart made significant contributions to African American literature and the discourse on race and gender in early America. Here are some multiple choice questions MCQs based on the information you provided. How did African American women who wrote spiritual narratives assert their authority to preach? And write A. By citing the Epistle of James. B. By appealing to prominent male leaders. C. By aligning themselves with established denominations. D. By avoiding public scrutiny. Answer. A. By citing the Epistle of James. What was the significance of spiritual narratives written by African American women in the antebellum North? A. They offered historical context but no literary tropes. B. They countered the dominant racist and sexist discourse of early American society. C. They focused solely on religious experiences without addressing social issues. D. They were not considered literary contributions. Answer. B. They countered the dominant racist and sexist discourse of early American society. Where was Zilpha Ela born? A. England. B. Africa. C. America. D. Jamaica. Answer. C. America. What was the title of Zilpha Ela's narrative, published in 1846? 
A. Memoirs of the Life, Religious Experience, Ministerial Travel and Labors of Mrs. Zilfa Ela, an American female of color. B. Meditations from the Pen of Mrs. Zilfa Ela. C. The Life and Times of Zilfa Ela. D. A Woman's Journey, The Story of Zilfa Ela. Answer. A. Memoirs of the Life, Religious Experience, Ministerial Travel and Labors of Mrs. Zilfa Ela, an American female of color. Ho praised Maria W. Stewart's works. A. Alexander Cremel and William Lloyd Garrison. B. Harriet Beecher Stowe and Frederick Douglass. C. Phyllis Wheatley and Jupiter Hammond. D. None of the above. Answer. A. Alexander Cremel and William Lloyd Garrison. How did African American women who wrote spiritual narratives assert their authority to preach and write? A. By citing the Epistle of James. B. By appealing to prominent male leaders. C. By aligning themselves with established denominations. D. By avoiding public scrutiny. Answer. A. By citing the Epistle of James. What was the significance of spiritual narratives written by African American women in the antebellum North? A. They offered historical context but no literary tropes. B. They countered the dominant racist and sexist discourse of early American society. C. They focused solely on religious experiences without addressing social issues. D. They were not considered literary contributions. Answer. B. They countered the dominant racist and sexist discourse of early American society. Where was Zilfa Ela born? A. England. B. Africa. C. America. D. Jamaica. Answer. C. America. What was the title of Zilfa Ela's narrative, published in 1846? A. Memoirs of the Life, Religious Experience, Ministerial Travel and Labors of Mrs. Zilfa Ela, an American female of color. B. Meditations from the Pen of Mrs. Zilfa Ela. C. The Life and Times of Zilfa Ela. D. A Woman's Journey, The Story of Zilfa Ela. Answer. A. Memoirs of the Life, Religious Experience, Ministerial Travel and Labors of Mrs. Zilfa Ela, an American female of color. Ho praised Maria W. Stewart's works. A. Alexander Cremel and William Lloyd Garrison. B. Harriet Beecher Stowe and Frederick Douglass. C. Phyllis Wheatley and Jupiter Hammond. D. None of the above. Answer. A. Alexander Cremel and William Lloyd Garrison. Why were Jarena Lee's narratives not endorsed by the Methodists? A. They were considered too radical. B. They were contrary to Methodist church doctrine regarding women preachers. C. They were deemed too critical of the church. D. They were poorly written. Answer. B. They were contrary to Methodist church doctrine regarding women preachers. What did critics argue was Jarena Lee's contribution to African American literature? A. Her eloquence as a preacher. B. Her obedience to church doctrine. C. Her disobedience to the patriarchal church system and her assertion of women's rights. D. Her adherence to traditional literary forms. Answer. C. Her disobedience to the patriarchal church system and her assertion of women's rights. What was the title of Nancy Prince's pamphlet published in 1841? A. The Life and Religious Experience of Nancy Prince. B. A Narrative of the Life and Travels of Mrs. Nancy Prince. C. The West Indies, being a description of the islands, progress of Christianity, education, and liberty among the colored population generally. D. Religious Experience and Journal of Mrs. Nancy Prince. Answer. C. The West Indies, being a description of the islands, progress of Christianity, education, and liberty among the colored population generally. What did Nancy Prince's narrative pose a counter-narrative to? A. The ideal of a demure woman with no voice in society. B. The dominance of men in missionary work. C. The portrayal of African Americans as inferior. D. The limitations of travel narratives. Answer. A. The ideal of a demure woman with no voice in society. How did Sojourner Truth come up with her new name? A. It was given to her by a close friend. B. It was the name of a character in a book she read. C. It was inspired by a dream she had. D. It was to signify the new person she had become in the spirit, a traveler dedicated to speaking the truth as God revealed it. Answer. D. It was to signify the new person she had become in the spirit, a traveler dedicated to speaking the truth as God revealed it. What was the focus of many African American women writers in the post-enslaved people era? A. Fictional works. B. Principles of behavior and life during the period. 
C. Historical accounts. D. Scientific research. Answer. B. Principles of behavior and life during the period. Who was among the most prominent post-slavery writers and a founder of the NAACP? A. Frederick Douglass. B. Booker T. Washington. C. Langston Hughes. D. W. E. B. Du Bois. Answer. D. W. E. B. Du Bois. What collection of essays did W. E. B. Du Bois publish that was highly influential? A. Up from Slavery. B. The Souls of Black Folk. C. Native Son. D. Black Boy. Answer. B. The Souls of Black Folk. What did Du Bois believe African Americans should do to battle prejudice and inequity? A. Integrate fully into white society. B. Embrace separatism. C. Work together because of their common interests. D. Leave the United States. Answer. C. Work together because of their common interests. Where was Du Bois a professor? A. Harvard University. B. Atlanta University and later at Howard University. C. Yale University. D. Princeton University. Answer. B. Atlanta University and later at Howard University. What was Booker T. Washington's approach to ending racial strife in America? A. Adopting a confrontational attitude. B. Lifting themselves up and proving themselves the equal of whites. C. Embracing separatism. D. Seeking political alliances with sympathetic white leaders. Answer. B. Lifting themselves up and proving themselves the equal of whites. What was Francis E. W. Harper known for advocating against? A. Women's suffrage. B. Slavery and post-Civil War repressive measures against blacks. C. Educational reform. D. Racial segregation. Answer. B. Slavery and post-Civil War repressive measures against blacks. What was Elizabeth Keckley's profession after obtaining her freedom? A. Educator. B. Politician. C. Dressmaker. D. Journalist. Answer. C. Dressmaker. What significant work did Elizabeth Keckley publish? A. Uncle Tom's Cabin. B. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. C. Behind the Scenes, or, 30 Years as a Slave and 4 Years in the White House. D. The Souls of Black Folk. Answer. C. Behind the Scenes, or, 30 Years as a Slave and 4 Years in the White House. What contribution did Elizabeth Keckley make to racial improvement and protection? A. She founded the Home for Destitute Women and Children in Washington, D.C. B. She became a prominent political activist. C. She wrote a best-selling novel about her life. D. She served as a teacher at a university. Answer. A. She founded the Home for Destitute Women and Children in Washington, D.C. What did Josephine Brown write a biography about? A. Her mother. B. Her father, William Wells Brown. C. Herself. D. Her abolitionist activities. Answer. B. Her father, William Wells Brown. What was Marcus Garvey's primary focus in his activism? A. Women's rights. B. Pan-Africanism and black nationalism. C. Workers' rights. D. Environmental conservation. Answer. B. Pan-Africanism and black nationalism. What were the titles of the books compiled and published by Marcus Garvey's second wife? A. The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey or, Africa for the Africans and More Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey. B. The Negro World and Universal Negro Improvement Association. C. Africa for the Africans and More Africa for the Africans. D. The Garvey Papers and the Garvey Chronicles. Answer. A. The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey or, Africa for the Africans and More Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey. What was Paul Lawrence Dunbar known for? A. Being the first African-American poet to gain national prominence. B. Writing novels about rural African-American life. C. Publishing essays on African-American history. D. Advocating for civil rights through his writing. Answer. A. Being the first African-American poet to gain national prominence. Who wrote Magnolia Leaves, a book of poetry on religious, spiritual, and occasionally feminist themes? A. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. B. Mary Weston Fordham. C. Charles W. Shisnut. D. Marcus Garvey. Answer. B. Mary Weston Fordham. Langston Hughes first gained attention for his work published in which publication? A. The Brownies, book. B. The Book of American Negro Poetry. C. The Weary Blues. D. The Negro Speaks of Rivers. Answer. A. The Brownies, book. 
who edited the anthology The Book of American Negro Poetry, which featured the work of Langston Hughes and Claude McKay, among others. A. Langston Hughes. B. James Weldon Johnson. C. Zora Neale Hurston. D. County Cullen. Answer. B. James Weldon Johnson. Which of Zora Neale Hurston's novels became a classic and was rediscovered in the 1970s? A. Their Eyes Were Watching God. B. Kane. C. The Living Is Easy. D. Interracial Heary. A Novel of Negro Life. Answer. A. Their Eyes Were Watching God. What was the title of County Cullen's famous collection of poetry that described everyday black life? A. Color. B. Copper Sun. C. The Ballad of the Brown Girl. D. The Black Man's Verse. Answer. A. Color. Which author's novel Thinteracial Heary, a novel of Negro life focused on interracial prejudice among African Americans? A. Wallace Thurman. B. Langston Hughes. C. Dorothy West. D. Frank Marshall Davis. Answer. A. Wallace Thurman. Which period marked a turning point for African American literature, where it began to be absorbed into mainstream American culture? A. Reconstruction Era. B. Harlem Renaissance. C. Civil War Era. D. Great Migration. Answer. B. Harlem Renaissance. During which period did a large migration of African Americans occur, leading to the growth of black urban culture and empowerment of the civil rights movement? A. World War II. B. World War I. C. Civil War. D. Great Depression. Answer. B. World War I. Which author, known for addressing issues of race and sexuality, wrote deeply personal stories and essays, including the novel, Go Tell It on the Mountain? A. James Baldwin. B. Richard Wright. C. Langston Hughes. D. Zora Neale Hurston. Answer. A. James Baldwin. Who is best known for the novel? Native Son, which tells the story of Bigger Thomas, a black man struggling for acceptance in Chicago. A. James Baldwin. B. Langston Hughes. C. Richard Wright. D. Zora Neale Hurston. Answer. C. Richard Wright. What did James Baldwin title a collection of his own essays in reference to Richard Wright's novel, Native Son? A. The Fire Next Time. B. Another Country. C. Notes of a Native Son. D. Could Tell It on the Mountain. Answer. C. Notes of a Native Son. Who is best known for his novel, Native Son, which tells the story of Bigger Thomas, a black man struggling for acceptance in Chicago? A. James Baldwin. B. Langston Hughes. C. Richard Wright. D. Zora Neale Hurston. Answer. C. Richard Wright. Which author wrote the novel, Invisible Man, which won the National Book Award in 1953? A. James Baldwin. B. Langston Hughes. C. Richard Wright. D. Ralph Ellison. Answer. D. Ralph Ellison. Who became the first African American to win the Pulitzer Prize for her 1949 book of poetry, Annie Allen? A. Gwendolyn Brooks. B. Nikki Giovanni. C. Sonia Sanchez. D. Lorraine Hansberry. Answer. A. Gwendolyn Brooks. Which playwright wrote the play, A Raisin in the Sun, which focuses on a poor black family living in Chicago? A. Lorraine Hansberry. B. Amiri Baraka. C. Ralph Ellison. D. Richard Wright. Answer. A. Lorraine Hansberry. What is the title of Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous essay written from Birmingham jail? A. I Have a Dream. B. The Autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr. C. Letter from Birmingham Jail. D. Strength to Love. Answer. C. Letter from Birmingham Jail. Who was considered the first published black writer in America? A. Phyllis Wheatley. B. Jupiter Hammond. C. William Wells Brown. D. Sojourner Truth. Answer. B. Jupiter Hammond. Which novel is considered the first published in the United States by an African American woman? A. Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. B. Arnig by Harriet Wilson. C. The Garys and Their Friends by Frank J. Webb. D. The Bondwoman's Narrative by Hannah Crafts. Answer. B. R. Nig by Harriet Wilson. Who wrote the novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God? A. Zora Neale Hurston. B. Toni Morrison. C. Alice Walker. D. Maya Angelou. Answer. A. Zora Neale Hurston. What is Langston Hughes known for? A. Poetry. B. Fiction. C. Playwriting. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. 
which African-American writer won the National Book Award for his novel, Invisible Man? A. James Baldwin B. Ralph Ellison C. Richard Wright D. W. E. B. Dubois Answer. B. Ralph Ellison What are the two main language traditions in Canadian literature? A. French and Spanish B. English and French C. German and English D. English and Indigenous Languages Answer. B. English and French What were some of the earliest Canadian narratives about? A. Politics B. Travel and Exploration C. Love Stories D. Scientific Discoveries Answer. B. Travel and Exploration which term describes a condition shared by all colonial-era societies in their beginnings, but sometimes erroneously thought to apply mainly to Canada? A. Colonial mentality B. Garrison mentality C. Settler mentality D. Conquest mentality Answer. B. Garrison mentality In recent decades, what has strongly influenced Canada's literature? A. Religious movements B. Political ideologies C. Immigrants from around the world D. Technological advancements. Answer. C. Immigrants from around the world. How has Canada's ethnic and cultural diversity been reflected in its literature since the 1980s? A. It has been ignored. B. It has been downplayed. C. It has been openly reflected. D. It has been used for propaganda. Answer. C. It has been openly reflected. According to the statement, why is the term, indigenous literature, considered misleading? A. Because indigenous literature is not well known. B. Because there is no literature produced by indigenous peoples. C. Because each indigenous group has its own literature, language, and culture. D. Because indigenous literature is not diverse. Answer. C. Because each indigenous group has its own literature, language, and culture. What does Jeanette Armstrong suggest about the term, native literature? A. It accurately represents the diversity of indigenous literature. B. It is a useful term for discussing indigenous literature as a whole. C. It should be avoided because it oversimplifies the diversity of indigenous literature. D. It is the preferred term among indigenous writers. Answer. C. It should be avoided because it oversimplifies the diversity of indigenous literature. According to the statement, what kind of literature exists among indigenous peoples of Canada? A. Homogenous literature. B. Generic literature. C. Literature specific to each group. D. Western literature. Answer. C. Literature specific to each group. What does the statement imply about the diversity of indigenous cultures in Canada? A. There is little diversity among indigenous cultures. B. Indigenous cultures in Canada are all very similar. C. Each indigenous group in Canada has its own distinct culture. D. Indigenous cultures in Canada are all the same. Answer. C. Each indigenous group in Canada has its own distinct culture. How does the statement suggest that indigenous literature should be understood? A. As a single, unified body of work. B. As a collection of works by various indigenous authors. C. As a reflection of the diversity of indigenous cultures. D. As a literary tradition separate from mainstream Canadian literature. Answer. C. As a reflection of the diversity of indigenous cultures. What does oral tradition include? A. Novels and short stories. B. Myths, folklore, and legends. C. Scientific theories. D. Political speeches. Answer. B. Myths, folklore, and legends. Why is passing down oral tradition considered important? A. It ensures that stories are retold accurately. B. It helps to preserve written literature. C. It prevents cultural change. D. It is a requirement of the government. Answer. A. It ensures that stories are retold accurately. How does oral tradition shape the everyday life of a community and individual? A. By enforcing strict rules. B. By providing entertainment. C. By influencing identity and spirituality. D. By promoting material wealth. Answer. C. By influencing identity and spirituality. How do elders contribute to the preservation of oral tradition? A. By writing down stories. B. By recording songs and prayers. 
C. By serving as a link between generations. D. By organizing cultural events. Answer. C. By serving as a link between generations. What impact did the residential school system have on indigenous communities? A. It strengthened cultural identity. B. It caused severe cultural, psychological, and social impacts. C. It increased cultural exchange. D. It improved educational opportunities. Answer. B. It caused severe cultural, psychological, and social impacts. Which of the following is not true about Mi'kmaq literature? A. It is rooted in traditional oral stories. B. Glooscap is a commonly known cultural hero in Mi'kmaq literature. C. Rita Joe primarily writes in French. D. Lindsay Marshall is a Mi'kmaq poet. Answer. C. Rita Joe primarily writes in French. What themes does Rita Joe explore in her poetry? A. Romance and adventure. B. Loss and resilience of her culture. C. Political ideologies. D. Science fiction. Answer. B. Loss and resilience of her culture. Hoy's Glue's Gap in Mi'kmaq literature. A. A historical figure. B. A trickster figure and cultural hero. C. A political leader. D. A religious figure. Answer. B. A trickster figure and cultural hero. In addition to writing, what other form of art has Rita Joe been recognized for? A. Painting. B. Sculpture. C. Music. D. Poetry. Answer. D. Poetry. Apart from Rita Joe, which other poets are mentioned as notable in Mi'kmaq literature? A. John Smith and Sarah Johnson. B. Lindsay Marshall, Shirley Bear, and Teresa Marshall. C. William White and Mary Black. D. David Brown and Susan Green. Answer. B. Lindsay Marshall, Shirley Bear, and Teresa Marshall. Which of the following is not true about the Mohawk people? A. They are geographically dispersed across Canada and the United States. B. They are part of the Iroquois Confederacy. C. Their traditions are not influenced by the Great Law of Peace. D. They have a creation story that is foundational to their beliefs. Answer. C. Their traditions are not influenced by the Great Law of Peace. What is the Great Law of Peace? A. A Mohawk creation story. B. A treaty between Mohawk and other nations. C. A governance system created by the Iroquois Confederacy. D. A religious text of the Mohawk people. Answer. C. A governance system created by the Iroquois Confederacy. Hoy's Beth Brandt. A. A Mohawk letter. B. An essayist and short story writer who incorporates Mohawk creation story in her writings. C. A famous Mohawk artist. D. The author of Weaver's Spider's Web. Answer. B. An essayist and short story writer who incorporates Mohawk creation story in her writings. Anishinaabe and Ojibwe literature. Wo wrote the autobiography titled The Life, History, and Travels of Ka Ji Ga Bo. A. George Copway. B. Basil Johnston. C. Richard Wagamese. D. Drew Hayden Taylor. Answer. A. George Copway. What is significant about Richard Wagamese's Keeper and Me? A. It is the first book written by a Canadian Indigenous person in English. B. It is an autobiography that prioritizes Ojibwe beliefs and values. C. It features the coyote, a trickster figure, and a powerful woman, symbols in longhouse cultures. D. It is an essay addressing Indigenous identity. Answer. B. It is an autobiography that prioritizes Ojibwe beliefs and values. What are some recurring themes in Cree literature? A. Urbanization and modernization. B. The disappearance of the buffalo and confinement on reserves. C. Romantic love and adventure. D. Political activism and social justice. Answer. B. The disappearance of the buffalo and confinement on reserves. Hoyce Thompson Highway. A. Acre leader. B. Acre writer, playwright, and musician. C. A fictional character in Cree literature. D. A political activist. Answer. B. A Cree writer, playwright, and musician. What is, Kiss of the Fur Queen, about? A. The migration patterns of buffalo. B. The history of the Cree people. C. The experiences of Cree people in residential schools. D. The cultural significance of the trickster figure. Answer. C. The experiences of Cree people in residential schools. How does the trickster figure Wisajichak parallel Christ in, Kiss of the Fur Queen? A. Both are figures of authority. B. Both are associated with healing. C. Both are symbols of sexual abuse. 
D. Both are fictional characters. Answer. B. Both are associated with healing. What is the Periodical Marketers of Canada Aboriginal Literature Award inspired by? A. The Canadian Government. B. The First Nation Communities Read Program. C. The United Nations. D. The Indigenous Writers Guild. Answer. B. The First Nation Communities Read Program. What prize do the award-winning writers receive? A. A certificate. B. A publishing deal. C. $5,000 in title selection. D. Ashalarship. Answer. C. $5,000 in title selection. What does the First Nations Communities Read Program aim to promote? A. Science fiction literature. B. Family literacy and storytelling. C. Crime novels. D. Poetry. Answer. B. Family literacy and storytelling. What is Daryl Dennis's book, Peace Pipe Dreams, about? A. Religious ceremonies. B. Treaties between indigenous peoples and settlers. C. Indigenous residential schools. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. What does Daryl Dennis's book empathize regarding stereotypes and historical events for indigenous peoples in North America? A. It reinforces stereotypes. B. It challenges stereotypes. C. It ignores stereotypes. D. It creates new stereotypes. Answer. B. It challenges stereotypes. Bird Award. Which of Richard Wagamese's books won the Bird Award for First Nations, Métis, and Inuit Literature in 2013? A. They Called Me Number 1 B. The Inconvenient Indian C. Indian Horse D. North End Love Songs Answer. C. Indian Horse. What sport does Richard Wagamese illuminate in a positive light in, Indian Horse? A. Basketball. B. Soccer. C. Ice Hockey. D. Lacrosse. Answer. C. Ice Hockey. What is the focus of Bev Seller's book, They Called Me Number 1, Secrets and Survival at an Indian Residential School? A. Life after residential school. B. Residential school experiences. C. Indigenous leadership. D. Canadian history. Answer. B. Residential school experiences. Governor General's Award. What is the focus of Katharina Vermette's poetry book, North End Love Songs? A. Love stories from Winnipeg's North End. B. Poems about the beauty of Winnipeg. C. Poems about the disappearance of her brother in Winnipeg's North End. D. Poems about the tough and notorious neighborhood of Winnipeg's North End. Answer. D. Poems about the tough and notorious neighborhood of Winnipeg's North End. What is the focus of David Robertson's book, On the Trapline, which won the 2021 Governor General's Literary Award for Young People's Literature, Illustration? A. A young boy's trip with his mashom to the family trapline. B. A collection of indigenous stories. C. A historical account of indigenous life. D. A guidebook for survival in the wilderness. Answer. A. A young boy's trip with his mashom to the family trapline. Indigenous Voices Awards. Why were the Indigenous Voices Awards created in 2017? A. To support cultural appropriation in literature. B. In response to a controversy involving a prize supporting cultural appropriation. C. To celebrate Indigenous writers who have won other awards. D. To promote Indigenous literature outside of Canada. Answer. B. In response to a controversy involving a prize supporting cultural appropriation. Who launched the crowdfunding campaign to create the Indigenous Voices Awards? A. Billy Ray Belcourt. B. J. D. Curtness. C. Aviak Johnston. D. Robin Parker. Answer. D. Robin Parker. Wow, are some of the winners of the first Indigenous Voices Awards in 2018? A. Lee Miracle. B. Billy Ray Belcourt. J. D. Curtness, and Aviak Johnston. C. Sheldon Auberman and Simon Tukum. D. Larry Loy and Constance Brissenden. Answer. B. Billy Ray Belcourt. J. D. Curtness, and Aviak Johnston. Norma Fleck Award for Canadian Children's Nonfiction. What book won Norma Fleck Award for Canadian Children's Nonfiction in 2000? A. Raven Song. B. The Shaman's Nephew. A Life in the Far North. C. As Long as the River Flows. D. The Life and Times of Simon Tukum. Answer. B. The Shaman's Nephew. A Life in the Far North. What is the focus of Larry Loy and Constance Brissenden's book, As Long as the River Flows? A. Cree culture and residential schools. B. Inuit life. C. The impact of residential schools on indigenous communities.
D. Short stories about Inuit life. Answer. A Cree culture and residential schools. Marilyn Bailey Picture Book Award. What age group are the Marilyn Bailey Picture Book Award winning books aimed at? A. Children ages 6 to 12. B. Children ages 3 to 8. C. Teenagers. D. Adults. Answer. B. Children ages 3 to 8. What is the focus of Nicola I. Campbell's book, She Sheetko? A. A young girl's experience at summer camp. B. A young girl preparing to attend residential school. C. A young boy's adventure in the wilderness. D. A young girl's journey to find her lost dog. Answer. B. A young girl preparing to attend residential school. TD Canadian Children's Literature Award. What is the grand prize for the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award? A. $10,000. B. $20,000. C. $30,000. D. $50,000. Answer. C. $30,000. What is the focus of Melanie Florence's book, Missing the Mama? A. A missing grandmother. B. The bond between a mother and daughter. C. A young girl's search for her lost pet. D. The history of indigenous peoples in Canada. Answer. B. The bond between a mother and daughter. Which book by Nicola I. Campbell won the TD Canadian Children's Literature Award Grand Prize in 2009? A. She She Etco. B. She She's Canoe. C. Sometimes I feel like a fox. D. She She's Canoe. Answer. D. She She's Canoe. Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC. What is the focus of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, TRC? A. To promote Indigenous literature. B. To recognize the impact of Canadian residential schools on Indigenous peoples. C. To revitalize the relationship between Canadians and Indigenous peoples. D. All of the above. Answer. B. To recognize the impact of Canadian residential schools on Indigenous peoples. What is the TRC's It Matters to Me campaign aimed at? A. Promoting Indigenous literature. B. Highlighting the importance of reconciliation. C. Encouraging residential school survivors to share their stories. D. Advocating for government policies. Answer. B. Highlighting the importance of reconciliation. Indigenous Book Club Month. When is Indigenous Book Club Month in Canada? A. January. B. June. C. August. D. December. Answer. B. June. What is the goal of Indigenous Book Club Month? A. To promote Indigenous authors. B. To encourage reading among Indigenous peoples. C. To restore the relationship between Canadian and Indigenous peoples. D. To celebrate Indigenous history and culture. Answer. C. To restore the relationship between Canadian and Indigenous peoples. What is the official hashtag for Indigenous Book Club Month on social media? A. Hashtag Indigenous Books. B. Hashtag Read Indigenous. C. Hashtag Indigenous Reads. D. Hashtag Native Books. Answer. C. Hashtag Indigenous Reads. When was the Lower Canada Legislative Library founded? A. 1802. B. 1818. C. 1820. D. 1849. Answer. A. 1802. How does the founding date of the Lower Canada Legislative Library compare to the Library of the British House of Commons? A. It was founded later. B. It was founded earlier. C. Both were founded in the same year. D. There is no mention of the Library of the British House of Commons. Answer. A. It was founded later. What happened to the books in the Lower Canada Legislative Library during the burning of the Canadian Parliament in 1849? A. They were all saved. B. They were moved to the Canadian Parliament in Montreal. C. They were destroyed along with thousands of French Canadian books and a few hundred English books. D. There is no mention of the fate of the books. Answer. C. They were destroyed along with thousands of French Canadian books and a few hundred English books. What event is credited with leading to the rise of French Canadian fiction? A. The founding of the Lower Canada Legislative Library. B. The 1820s Quebec Literature Revival. C. The rise of Quebec patriotism in the 1837 Lower Canada Rebellion. D. The modern system of primary school education. Answer. C. The rise of Quebec patriotism in the 1837 Lower Canada Rebellion. Which novel is widely regarded as the first French-Canadian novel? A. L'influence d'un livre by Philippe Ignace Francois Aubert de Gaspé. B. The Rural Novel. C. The Historical Novel. D. Balzac's Works. Answer. 
Et l'influence d'un livre by Philippe Ignace Francois Aubert de Gaspé. Woe became one of Quebec's first literary theorists in 1866. A. Louis Honoré Frechette. B. Arthur Buys. C. Father Henri Raymond Cassegrain. D. Gabriel Roy. Answer. C. Father Henri Raymond Cassegrain. What did Father Henri Raymond Cassegrain argue should be literature's goal? A. To project an image of proper Catholic morality. B. To challenge societal norms. C. To explore psychological and sociological foundations. D. To break conventions and write more interesting works. Answer. A. To project an image of proper Catholic morality. Wowery somathors who broke conventions to write more interesting works, according to the passage. A. Louis Honoré Frechette and Arthur Buys B. Gabriel Roy and Anne Ebert C. Roth Carrier and Nicole Brassard D. Antonin Mile and Roth Carrier Answer. A. Louis Honoré Frechette and Arthur Buys. What event greatly expanded French Canadian literature? A. The 1930s psychological and sociological novel trend. B. The beginnings of industrialization in the 1950s. C. The Quiet Revolution in the 1960s. D. The Turmoil of the Second World War. Answer. C. The Quiet Revolution in the 1960s. Wo wrote the story, The Hockey Sweater, in 1979. A. Gabriel Roy. B. Roth Carrier. C. Antonin Maile. D. Nicole Brassard. Answer. B. Roth Carrier. When did Canada officially become a country? A. July 1, 1867. B. July 1, 1769. C. July 1, 1832. D. July 1, 1852. Answer. A. July 1, 1867. Which book is often considered to be the first work of Canadian literature? A. The Backwoods of Canada by Catherine Parr Trail. B. The Clockmaker by Thomas Chandler Halliburton. C. Roughing It in the Bush by Susanna Moody. D. The History of Emily Montague by Francis Brooke. Answer. D. The History of Emily Montague by Francis Brooke. What themes did Susanna Moody and Catherine Parr Trail's books often deal with? A. Exploration of the Canadian Wilderness. B. Survival in the Rugged Canadian Environment. C. Political Intrigue in Early Canada. D. Cultural Differences Between Canada and England. Answer. B. Survival in the Rugged Canadian Environment. Which of the following did not write about life in Canada? A. Thomas Chandler Halliburton. B. Susanna Moody. C. Catherine Parr Trail. D. Agnes Strickland. Answer. D. Agnes Strickland. What is Thomas Chandler Halliburton remembered for? A. Writing elegant royal biographies. B. Creating the character Sam Slick. C. Documenting pioneer life in Upper Canada. D. Writing about the conquest of New France. Answer. B. Creating the character Sam Slick. Which group of poets came to prominence in the 1880s and 1890s and is known as the Confederation Poets? A. The Montreal Group B. The Confederation of Canadian Poets C. The Confederation Poets D. The Canadian Literary Confederation Answer. C. The Confederation Poets Which novel by L. M. Montgomery is one of the best-selling books worldwide? A. Emily of New Moon B. Rilla of Ingleside C. Anne of Green Gables D. The Blue Castle. Answer. C. Anne of Green Gables. Wow is the best-selling humor writer in the world between 1915 and 1925. A. Stephen Leacock. B. Morley Callahan. C. Hugh McLennan. D. W. O. Mitchell. Answer. A. Stephen Leacock. Which Canadian author is best known for his work, Never Cry Wolf? A. Mordecai Richler. B. Farley Mowat. C. Leonard Cohen. D. Margaret Lawrence. Answer. B. Farley Mowat. Woe wrote the novel, Beautiful Losers, and was later known for his folk singing and songwriting. A. Farley Mowat. B. Leonard Cohen. C. Mordecai Richler. D. Hugh McLennan. Answer. B. Leonard Cohen. Which Canadian author's work, Canada Made Me, was widely rejected for presenting a sour interpretation of the country? A. Margaret Lawrence. B. Norman Levine. C. Sheila Watson. D. Mordecai Richler. Answer. B. Norman Levine. Hoy's arguably the best-known living Canadian writer internationally. A. Robertson Davies. B. Mordecai Richler. C. Margaret Atwood. D. Margaret Lawrence. Answer. C. Margaret Atwood. Which of the following authors is not mentioned as a great 20th-century Canadian author? 
A. Michael Ondatya. B. Carol Shields. C. Alistair McLeod. D. Alice Munro. Answer. D. Alice Munro. Which author is known for her novel, The Stone Angel? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Margaret Lawrence. C. Mavis Gallant. D. Carol Shields. Answer. B. Margaret Lawrence. Hoys known for their novel, The English Patient. A. Michael Ondatya. B. Margaret Atwood. C. Alistair MacLeod. D. Gabrielle Roy. Answer. A. Michael Ondatya. Which author is known for the Anne of Green Gables series? A. Margaret Lawrence. B. Mavis Gallant. C. Mazo de la Roche. D. L. M. Montgomery. Answer. D. L. M. Montgomery. Who has been called the best living writer of short stories in English and is a Nobel laureate? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Alice Munro. C. Carol Shields. D. Lawrence Hill. Answer. B. Alice Munro. Who won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1995 for their novel, The Stone Diaries? A. Carol Shields. B. Lawrence Hill. C. Alice Munro. D. Margaret Atwood. Answer. A. Carol Shields. Which Canadian novelist won the Commonwealth Writers Prize Overall Best Book Award in 2008 for The Book of Negroes? A. Alice Munro. B. Carol Shields. C. Lawrence Hill. D. Margaret Atwood. Answer. C. Lawrence Hill. Wow is the first Canadian to win the Nobel Prize in Literature, awarded in 2013? A. Carol Shields. B. Alice Munro. C. Margaret Atwood. D. Lawrence Hill. Answer. B. Alice Munro. Which literary movement in Vancouver brought about poetic innovation in the 1960s? A. The Tisch Poetry Movement. B. The Vancouver Renaissance. C. The Canadian Poetic Revolution. D. The Pacific Coast Poetry Revival. Answer. A. The Tisch Poetry Movement. Who is probably the best-known Canadian poet living today? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Anne Carson. C. Christian Bach. D. Michael Ondatya. Answer. B. Anne Carson. Who edited the notable anthology, The New Oxford Book of Canadian Verse? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Anne Carson. C. Christian Bach. D. Michael Ondatya. Answer. A. Margaret Atwood. Which Canadian poet won the Lannan Literary Award for Poetry in 1996? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Anne Carson. C. Christian Bach. D. Michael Ondatya. Answer. B. Anne Carson. Who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2013? A. Margaret Atwood. B. Alice Munro. C. Michael Ondatya. D. Jan Martel. Answer. B. Alice Munro. Which Canadian author won the Booker Prize for The English Patient? A. Michael Ondatya. B. Margaret Atwood. C. Jan Martel. D. Alice Munro. Answer. A. Michael Ondatya. What were some of the difficulties faced by the Society of New France in its early days of colonization? A. Lack of resources. B. War with the Iroquois. C. Printing press prohibition. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Which document is not mentioned as a notable production? From the early days of colonization in New France. A. The voyage of Jacques Cartier. B. The Muses de la Nouvelle France of Marc Lescarbot. C. The Adventures of Sewer de Dirival. D. The Voyages of Samuel de Champlain. Answer. C. The Adventures of Sewer de Dirival. Who wrote the first patriotic song of Quebec? A. Samuel de Champlain. B. Marc Lescarbot. C. Francois Mario Chaudesclay. D. Gabriel Sagard. Answer. C. Francois Mario Chaudesclay. Which French writer referred to Cartier and Roberville in his work, Pantagruel? A. Francois Rabelais. B. Marguerite Bourgeois. C. Gabriel Sagard. D. Marc Lescarbot. Answer. A. Francois Rabelais. Which religious order's writings were important in the early days of New France? A. Jesuits. B. Benedictines. C. Franciscans. D. Dominicans. Answer. A. Jesuits. Who wrote the controversial book, Negres Blancs de Marique? A. Pierre Valliers. B. Gerard Bisset. C. Jacques Ferrand. D. Jacques Renault. Answer. A. Pierre Valliers. Which book by Pierre Valliers won acclaim in 1974? A. Negres Blancs de Marique. B. Memoirs du Tretino. C. Don Quixote de la Démanche. D. Le Casse. Answer. 
C. Don Quixote de la Démange. Which writer won Governor General's Awards for L'Incubation and Le Cycle? A. Pierre Valliers. B. Gerard Bisset. C. Jacques Ferrin. D. Jacques Renault. Answer. B. Gerard Bisset. Who received the Prix Athenais David from the Quebec government in 1977? A. Pierre Valliers. B. Gerard Bisset. C. Jacques Ferrin. D. Jacques Renault. Answer. C. Jacques Ferrin. Which novel by Jacques Renault is considered a classic of Quebec literature? A. Le Casse. B. N. Dautres Passages. C. Lagre. D. Contes du Pays Incertain. Answer. A. Le Casse.